Hello, hello, Brother Sewing and Crafting family. Brother Brand Ambassador Angela Wolf here, and wait to see what we got going on for you today. Well, if you're in Michigan, Chicago, pretty much anywhere in the cold, well, actually, I think Miami might have needed this this weekend. <laughs> We've got Jane joining us, and she's going to show you how to refashion a couple sweaters into a really cool scarf. But just want to let you know, I don't know what's going on. We are having storms out, but the internet's been acting very strange. So if it acts strange for you, we apologize in advance, but that's live. All right, so let's bring Jane to the party. Hi, Jane. How are you? Hello, hello, Angela. Hello, everybody. How are you? Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you're at today. I know, and I was thinking, okay, this scarf is going to be really fun and cute to do, and I was thinking you just needed it in Michigan because it's really <laughs> rainy and nasty. It's going to turn to snow, but I saw the weather in Miami. I always love to watch their weather because it makes me love the sunshine. But this weekend, I think it was like 45 degrees there. I think they need a scarf too. Melody, in Key Any, West, you need this. <laughs> anybody, I, you know, they're, they're, even if you don't have four seasons, you have four seasons. So you're going to need a scarf anywhere at any time. Because by the way, even if you're in Vegas and it's super hot outside or Phoenix, a scarf might be great for the inside air conditioner because sometimes it gets chilly. Uh, that's true. They do pump the air in there. They do definitely do that. So Jane, everybody's rolling in saying hi. They're saying where they're from, which we always love to see that. And we'll get rolling on the show, but we will, we are live and we can see your questions. If we lose you because of the internet, apologize in advance, but let's just roll and see how it goes. All right, let's do it, Angela. Hi, everybody. Southern California, Oklahoma, Houston, everybody. We are all Huntington Beach. It is great to be here with everybody today. So Angela, we know... Uh, we know I love to upcycle. I love taking old clothes and giving them a new life. So today I'm going to take those sweaters that, you know, maybe aren't doing anything but taking up space in your closet and we'll make this super cute scarf. It's really easy. Lots of cutting and measuring. We've got our trusty brother sewing machine and uh, we're going to make these. So let's give it a whirl. Should we do that? That sounds good. Take it away, Jane. Okay. All right, everybody. You ready? I'm ready. Okay. So grab those old sweaters. And by the way, I'm going to make this sweater or this scarf for you. There is a tutorial. There is a, I did a, uh, a video on it. It will be on Stitching Social in a, a, a week, maybe. It'll be up there for you to watch. But let's do this today. So I'm going to show you what you need and then we'll get moving and I will jump back in and Angela will let me know if there are any questions. So let's head over to uh, our overhead view and talk about the items that you need for this project. Now we are repurposing old sweaters. So I know you're saying, Jane, Jane, these sweaters look perfectly good. You know what? Yeah, sometimes you're right, but sometimes they got stinky armpit stains and sometimes they've got moth holes and a little bit worn here. So gently use sweaters or sweaters that you just wanna have a new life. So I have two sweaters here, contrasting colors. One side of the scarf will be the plain solid sweater material. The other side will be a mixture of these two scarves. Now you can add in, oh, let's say a third sweater. If you like, we can do that uh, as well. If, we, if, if you want to add a little mixture today, I'm going to go with two. So um, we need our two sweaters. We need our beautiful, gorgeous rotary cutter and straight edge. Two of my favorite tools, a pair of scissors, just in case. Sorry about the blinking. Not sure why my computer would like to make me talk to them. We need safety pins. And I know here it is, an old school thread and needle. No, I'm not going to make you sew the entire thing with a thread and needle. That's just not happening. Of course, I am using my brother pace setter uh, 500 today. We'll get to that in just a minute. But like I said, lots of measuring, lots of cutting. So the first thing we need to do is deconstruct these sweaters. So let's start with this one, this gray sweater. So for me, the easiest and best thing to do, let's like get rid of those sleeves first. Um, and I've got, I just changed the blade on my rotary cutter and I'm gonna get rid of that sleeve. I like to save your sleeve guys, because you might need some extra fabric if you wanna make some extra uh, panels for your scarf. Uh, our goal here is I'm going with the 70 inch, 70 inch scarf. So I'm going to need to create a panel that is 70 inches out of this sweater. This will be the back panel of the scarf. And then I want to do uh, every other 
block being the opposite pattern of, of, of sweater, excuse me. And so I need 13 of those. But while we're deconstructing these, uh, just to make it simple and easy, you can certainly use your scissors. This is really fun for me to just rip it apart. A lot of times, friends, I like to save my scraps because I feel like this would make a really cool addition to a cuff if I ever needed it. Okay, so here we are. I uh, hope everybody is having a great day wherever you're at. I am in Chicago. Um, and so far, so good. I think it was 46 degrees this morning, so I didn't need a scarf. Let me get rid of that. <laughs> uh, you have much better weather across the lake than we do. It is raining and getting cold and nasty, but it's a good day for a sweater at our end, Jane. Uh, yeah, well, hopefully it's a sweater that you don't want to wear anymore because we're going to turn it into a scarf. <laughs> Uh, and I should have, so the example was standing behind me um, when we first said hello uh, about what the finished scarf is going to look like. So let me know if you want to see that. I can always switch over and show you the finished scarf. I'm wearing one. Um, okay, so I've deconstructed my sweater. Now, um, like I said, I want to get 70 inches. So 71 and a half inches, excuse me, 70 and a half inches will give me the back length. So I made a little handy dandy. Is that um, autofocusing <laughs> bothering you? This has its own little heart. It's definitely what is it's. <laughs> I would not. Uh, it is. It's the autofocus. That's crazy. Uh, but we get it. It's like a heartbeat. It's like. It's the, like, like <laughs> I was just gonna say, oh, Jane, it must be Maxine outside, like tapping yeah. at the door, giving you some mojo. So I need two. I need um, a 21 and a half length here. I need two of those. And then I need a 14 and a half length. So because there's lots of cutting and measuring, in my video demo, I use pins. I got smart and I made, uh, I just made a, a simple pattern and I put this underneath my um, straight edge. So, and I want to be able to save some of this for the front side of my scarf. So because of this little V-neck, I'm going to start, I'm going to save this front part and use it for um, the shorter pieces. And I'm going to use the back piece because that is where the mo the majority of my material is. Look at that. And I can just lay these on here. So now that I get an idea, listen, I'm not really, um, you know, I just kind of throw things out there and I just do it and see if it works. And a lot of times it does. I can use this extra piece over here for a square. I'll use the front for some extra pieces. Or hey, let's see this. Ooh, that uh, it must be it must be auto focusing on the red boxes or something. That's really strange. Is it? Uh, we'll watch you. We'll watch you cut. But if I take it, you uh, off, a second, it's just when it gets really blurry. Yeah, let me know if it gets blurry. I'm trying. Maybe it just every time I move it. You know, it's really fun because it wasn't doing it yesterday. So. <laughs> What do you guys think? Should I go this way or should I go the other way? It looks like I could potentially have enough going this way. Let's do that. All right. So again, play around with where it lands. Um, you guys are watching me cut. Uh, did I? Are there any questions that I um, have been skipping over because I'm just yammering about talking about the heartbeat of this red thing? Eee. So see what I'm nope. doing? This is this is six and a half inches because I want my scarf to finish at six. This is the fun part. You can decide how long you want your scarf. You can decide how big you want your um, accent pieces to be. Uh, and you can do that now. I actually like a longer scarf because I can wrap it around multiple times. Oh, I love this. It, and it fits. And again, I'm not being super serious about how wide it is because it's all going to wash off when you cut it or when you sew it. Get it? We all get it. Everybody's saying they love this. And I agree. Liz says when you go to um, secondhand shops to buy stuff, it really doesn't matter what size you buy because yeah. you're going to cut it up and repurpose it anyways. And, so you know, that's exactly right. I bought a couple of sweaters at the, at the thrift store and I bought some smaller ones, which you'll go, oh, that I don't have enough for this space of the smaller one. So you're going to maybe use that piece for your accent piece, right? Um, okay, so there's that. And then do I have anything left here? Oh, yeah, look at this, friends. So now I want to get two of my 14 and a half pieces. And I don't know where I came up with these measurements. I wanted a 70-inch 
uh, scarf, and this is how I figured it out. So you can, again, make your own uh, decisions on, on the panel pieces that you'll use, and maybe you'll come up with a better way than I did. But um, I really will tell you, having these little cardboard cutouts for me is great. It's a game changer because I was just measuring with my measuring tape, and that was really not fun. <laughs> Um, and I get it sometimes. Well, I, I suppose, Angela, you'll know this people that quilt, you're used to doing lots of cutting and measuring, right? Oh yeah. And let me just get rid of that one. So now I've got one there and I need to do one more of these and then we'll move on to cutting the smaller panels. So look at all this extra fabric I have left of this scarf. I love it. So I'm going to get, uh, this sweater, I'm going to get plenty of extra, uh, accent pieces out of it. So let me just show you the accent piece. Am I still beating like a heart? Yes. Uh, this is the size of your accent piece. So this will be the width. This is the length. So every other one will be red and then gray and then red and then gray. For me to get what I need, I need seven. So 13 total, seven of my accent piece and six of this gray. So if I'm measuring right, I can put this one here for the back piece that's my main piece i can get one out of here i can get two three four i need six and i can cut two more here yes everybody this is how it works i love it when it works out like that so that just helps me um you know make sense of it all and then if this is going to be six and a half that's going to be six and a half so i will leave that there and come back to it in just a minute I'm telling you what, this is something that you can make today. You can make this right now. Let me know if you find a faster way to do it. I'll love you for it. Okay. That's pretty fast the way you're doing it, Jane. Pretty fast and easy to do. Super easy to do. And my the next sweater we're going to play around with here is a little bit thicker, so it might be fun. I, I'm probably out of my screen right now, but that's okay. You know, you know what I'm doing. So that's the first. This is This is my second. Excuse me. Excuse me, let me just go back to here. So I've got a long piece, I'm sorry, two long pieces, two short pieces. We are gonna sew these together in just a minute, but let's cut up, let's cut up the other sweater. How about that? Well, actually, should I finish cutting this one? So like I said, I now need, uh, I need six of the plain sweater. Again, could be any kind of sweater you want. So if I need six, this is three, this is four. I'm going to go two more right here. This is my five, six. Um, uh, somebody told me there was no math involved when I started sewing. <laughs> I'm just kidding. One of my favorite things I say to everybody who say, I can't sew. I go, listen, this is just a couple of straight stitches and a little math. Like, you're fine. Just do it. That's it. I know it. And I, I say, oh, I wish I would have paid more attention. But, you know, we always end up, we end up figuring it out, right? Uh, okay, and then because this is going to be my squares, I call them squares. They're a little bit bigger than a square. Um, and then I'm just going to lay this on here and, cu and cut these. Uh, uh, is my heartbeat still going? Uh, off and on. <laughs> okay. I, I, it, it, I think there's a setting on a camera that can easily fix that, right? One, two, it likes your red. Usually it'll do it with white, but it must red must be the second color. You know, when I was doing this yesterday, my own little practice dress rehearsal, it was behaving. So um, that looks a little there. So the, the thing too about sweaters is they're stretchy, right? So give it as much uh, ease as you can um, when you're cutting it because... You don't want to stretch it and have it not be in place. I'm sorry. I would have done that a lot cleaner had I not been on camera. <laughs> uh, let's see. And then I want this last one to go right here. Uh, Ibby said, yeah, there's a little math, but there's no sewing police. So you're good. Thank you. I love that there's no sewing police. And that is, I think, a freeing thing. So many of, I mean, we're all sewists. We love to do it. It's our passion. It's our hobby. It's our career, whatever it may be. Um, but the people that I try to encourage to sew, I tell them there's no right or wrong way. Just have fun with it. And for me to be able to disassemble these scarves 
or these scarves, these sweaters is, is having fun. You know, I know that this, I looked at the sweater, I'm like, oh, maybe I want to keep it, but it's getting a little ratty. And I, I'd rather use it as a scarf than as a sweater. So we've got six of our squares in the gray. We've got our back panel ready to go. This is our contrasting color. See how this has a pattern? This is going to be so cool. Yeah, I see the little heartbeat going. This is going to be so cool as your accent piece. And sometimes this may be a little thick, but that's okay. I'm going to save that sleeve for later. Um, that's a cute sweater. I know. I I was like, I can't cut this up. This is too cool. I can't cut it up. But guess what? It's going to make a cuter scarf. Save your scraps. I always say it. Save your scraps. Okay. So we see we've got a zipper here. Um, I'm going to use, because for this, I only want to get seven pieces. So for this, I'm going to use the back side because it gives me more space. And I'm just going to cut. See, I love this. You see that? I love it. So I'm going to try and save it. Uh, you're like, Jane, can we just move on with the project here? <laughs> I'm working about saving my scraps. Uh, go right up the side. Um, you can make these, listen, they can make these for every single one of your friends. They'll love them and you can make them today. So if you have enough sweaters, again, not, nothing too precise for me. I like to just have fun. Uh, and by the way, people love them. And my, all of my, um, my in-laws were like, where did you get that? I said, I made it. I'll make you one. And then I said, give me some sweaters you don't want, and I'll make it out of your sweaters. Oh, that's even better. I know it. Look at how great this piece is. Saving my scraps. Okay. So for the back, uh, for our, our accent panels, I need seven of not these. The gremlins took my pattern. Does that ever happen to you, Angela? <laughs> Of course, and the heartbeat is on. I think it's the red, Jane. I think it's the red. It loves the red panels. So I need seven. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. Boom, seven. So I can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven even. Um, I don't know about the heartbeat. I'm sorry. I'm going to just cut off this panel here so we can move on. You know, I try, I try to test these things ahead of time, you know, just I, I'll log on by myself and I'm like, okay, yeah, it looks good. Finally, it's great. <laughs> um, all right, here we go. Um, rotary cutter and straight edge. Let's talk about that. You cut a lot of things that way, don't you, Angela? I love the <laughs> rotary cutter. I know it. I don't know. It really depends on what it is because sometimes I get a better grip on the fabric depending on what kind of scissors I'm using. Yeah. But when it comes to just cutting strips like that, I've got these little, um, they're kind of like ruler bases and they've got uh, kind of like a cork on the bottom and they stick right to it. And you can just whoop, 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 you're done. Oh, that's Although great. Although it's not to the exact measurements, it's just the exact width. So just another idea. I saw somebody saying, um, yes. Okay. So this is a good one while you're cutting for us to talk about yeah. because you haven't shown how you're putting it together yet, but Na right. Naomi wants to know, uh, with knitting that can sometimes fray, what do you recommend? But you're going to be surging or sewing the edges anyways. So it won't matter. Yeah. And the interesting thing when we get to sewing, uh, cause I, I do worry about the fraying, but when we get to the sewing part, uh, I'm not, I'm not even going to backstitch at the end when I connect all of these little ones together because it's going to be sewn long. So these edges will stay. I mean, sometimes I do, but you know, you get a little daring. It's not going to come apart. And the fraying part is going to be all be on the inside. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Or surge it. Debbie says, I agree. Surge I, it. Love, I, I love surging too. Surging is great. Um, yeah, I guess you could totally surge. I don't know. I think I had my serger set up for something else. And so, you know, I got a little, whoopsie. I got a little crazy and just said, I'm going to sew it. Uh, I, I'm, I'm just switching this over so it's easier to do with my right hand. We're almost done cutting. I do say in my in my tutorial, uh, the video, I just looked at the camera. I'm like, wow, there's a lot of sew. There's a lot of cutting. One, two, three, <laughs> four, five. I need two more out of this and we're good to go. But isn't it interesting? You know, I, I always, what, if I make 
let's say if I make a bracelet for somebody, I find it interesting how the size of wrist, people's wrists vary. Um, but it, when I'm making uh, the scarf, the sweater looks so big and it's really, we're just getting enough to make one scarf. Isn't that interesting? That is. And then here's a good piece too. You can save your scraps. So if you need some extras, you can save them. Okay. So I've got all my cutting done. Yay us. I've got seven squares of red. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The reason I have seven is I want 13 across. I want the ends to be the red. And then I've got my, my gray. So I'm going to start like this. Okay. Here's, and you guys all know how to do this. You're going to take your, sometimes I can't even tell which is the right side, the wrong side. There you go. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to sew here. And then I'm going to do that to every single one of them um, at my machine. I'm, but I'm going to pin a few together and we'll go over and saw the, sew the long pieces together. And then we'll see what our timing looks like, Angela. And then I have a similar front piece that is already done. So Sounds good. be, be um, careful to not, uh, like for me, I want my pattern all going in the same direction. I guess it really doesn't matter. Um, but here, I'd like these all to go the same way. Uh, you can use clips. I'm using pins only because I'm trying to put a bunch together at one time. I suppose you could just do these sitting at your sewing machine and then putting them together. I got to be honest with you guys. You know what I just did? I, I, want the, I want the longer side long. So it would be like this. Thank you very much. Here we go. Uh, what are, Do you guys like uh, using the clips or do you guys like using uh, pins? What's the what's the verdict on that these days? That's a good question. I think it's probably going to be with knits. I'm going to just guess it's like 60 percent. No, I'll go 50 50 because some people just can't get comfortable with clips. But when it comes to knits, though, clips are great because they yeah. don't puncture any holes. But right. I always I just end up grabbing pins. That's my my go to. I have them everywhere. I don't have to go dig for them. Yeah, I mean. I typically, uh, when I'm sewing, I have two to three pins in my mouth at all times. So that now I'm like, not... <laughs> no, no, I... no. It, it's so weird. It's like a habit. It's just a. It's just this weird habit. So that's my right side. Um, make sure you, you're when you're pinning these. There, you're getting all the right. You know, you're pinning the wrong side to the wrong side. I did one scarf and I flipped it over, and there was it was like half and half. So you're going to go uh, along and then pin these together. I'm going to pin the long side. Um, and then we'll move over to the sewing machine. How about that? I, this is, it is really, and you're going to pin all these together and, and hit the sewing machine. But let's do this long side. Uh, it really is a very simple project. But I love the idea of giving new life to something that you want to throw away. So that's our right side or that you're ready to give away. And that's our right side. Uh, no, that's our right side. Thank you. So I'm going to do the two longer pieces in the center. Uh, it doesn't really matter um, because this is just giving us the length. That's that's all we care about here. It's giving, giving us the length for the back side of the sweater, uh, of your scarf, excuse me. Are we still, are we still heart beating? Here we go. And then my two shorter sides. Not too bad. It just does it with the red. Good grief. Okay. And one more pin and we'll move over to the machine. Oh, see, here's, this is where I might get confused, friends. Uh, I feel like some people might just start making one of these right now while we're talking. Uh, Angela are draining their closets. <laughs> <laughs> one uh, or the other. There we go. Oops. Okay. So let's head over to the machine, shall we? I'm taking oh, the long piece and I'll take the short piece. I'll see you over that there. Sounds good. So while she heads over there, be sure to keep asking your questions. I'm laughing about your pins though. So Jane, for real, I end up putting them in the, my side of my shirt and yeah. I'm always at the grocery store and I'll look down and have four pins like pinned into the <laughs> bottom, like my hip. And the lady there that I know her quite well because I shop there all the time. And she's like, oh, been sewing today? Oh yeah. <laughs> Do they ask you, what are you making? <laughs> what are you working on? Okay. Um, are we back? Oh, we're here. Hi, guys. 
Okay, so um, I just have these loosely pinned together. Let me know if my big hand is in the way. I tried to get in there close. Uh, I'm doing not much of a seam allowance, but before we start sewing, I want you to check this out. So I'm using my brother PS500, which I love. Cute little handy machine. I've had it for a long time. Do you see here? Uh, I like to set it here on a three, so it's going uh, right down Main Street. But my length is at a 2.5. This is my preference. I like to bring it up the length of the stitch to a 4.0. Could be longer just because my sweater material is stretchy. And I find that it, it allows it to move faster uh, underneath the foot when I'm sewing. Good? Sounds okay. good. Okay. And then I'm going to go just right down. And this <laughs> is Debbie, so yeah. You're not Say the again. only one that does that. You're not the only one that does that. And I can see everybody's still asking about the pins and stuff. Uh, hair clips work too. I learned that from Karina. Oh, hair clips? Mm hmm I just started using um, clips because I was like, oh, these are interesting. And I actually meant to grab them and use them for this project. Um, but I didn't grab them. Uh, I think it's just simply because I'm so used to using needles. Eee. See, I went a little bit crazy there, but I don't really care because there's no... Doesn't have to be perfect because you can figure that out when you're um, sewing it together. Question for everybody: I'd like to know what age you were when you first started sewing, and what was your first project? Angela, you can start. <laughs> I was well. I thought I was six, but my mom says I was four, oh. and I made a little white and red like polka dotted uh, bandana. Oh, that's super cute. I don't still have the bandana, but I do have the photo of me in the bandana. So I guess that counts. Oh, here. Someone just said, what kind of hair clips? This kind, like these little guys. Okay, so I've got these all together. Can you see them? These are all sewn oh, together. Okay. Front side, back side, super easy. Let's move on. Uh, Let's see. We're doing pretty good on timing. I can't believe it. Um, so now I'm just going to throw these in here. And again, I, I like my um, longer stitch length. Angela, you have any opinions on that? For knits? Um, well, a couple of things. One, if you use, if you, well, you're not really stretching it like for a garment. So I've not done it with a scarf, which would be fine. But for, if you're doing it for like a garment, if it's too long, then what happens, it'll pop out. So sometimes you have to use like a, little, a light zigzag stitch if you're using it for a garment. But for yeah. this, you're not going to be stretching it. So Right. And I'm trying not to stretch it. So right. because I don't want all of these to stretch when I'm sewing it, I want it to stay flat. I just and it, it and it kind of moves better for me underneath. Sorry. <laughs> it moves better for me uh, underneath the presser foot. I just saw somebody saying, if you're going to use a serger, would you base this first? Well, you could. I mean, sometimes, I mean, the serger would just, you could just run it to the serger. But uh, if you're new to serging, sometimes exactly what Jane just said, that fabric can move a little bit. So sometimes it's a great idea to baste it, like with a 5.0 stitch, just to have it secure and then run it to the serger. Then you know it's going to serge just as beautifully. By the way, in the comments, I see I've gotten a couple emails from people who have their, are accessing the new serger class. Did you, have you... Gotten your new serger. I know a lot of you ordered the new Airflow 3000. It's very exciting. I love so it. So shipping out this month. I already started shipping, which is fantastic. Oh my goodness. I love that. Airflow. Are you kidding me? It's like oh, breath of fresh air, literally. <laughs> uh, okay. So, and then this is it. It's like repetitive motion over and over and over again. And the other thing, too, is, I mean, you can base stitch it. I feel like um, because this is really forgiving, uh, it's a forgiving project. You know, nothing is specific to it has to be this measurement. It has to be this measurement. Um, if you base stitch it or you just sew it on your sewing machine, I don't even think you need a serger on the inside. I guess if you wanted the inside clean, but I think you're okay. And you notice I'm not even keeping clear of my edges, keeping them together. Uh, wait till I make something fancy. You'll be like, what happened? We like it when she's a little bit off. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Um, this is 
Now, uh, <laughs> so Jane, I'm having fun reading all the comments about what people have made. I think Barbara, is, this is so funny. She said a hideous <laughs> felt vest with Rick Rack. <laughs> Oh my well, goodness. Oh my God. This is, you got to answer the question. What are people making? Oh, you'll have to go back. There's a ton of comments, a ton <laughs> of comments. Okay. So let me ask you this. Uh, time for many. You want me to finish this? We have a couple more. Or I have one that's pre done. Do you want to go to pre done? No, yeah, keep sewing. We're having fun. Okay. I love it. That's great. Okay. So now, because I didn't pin these, I just have them kind of next to me. Excuse me for that. Uh, I'm just going to grab them and add them on as we go. So tell, read some more. All right. So we've got um, <laughs> Shirley made a jumper in Home X. She loved it, which is awesome. Uh, Jane, by the way, you didn't answer. What's your first project? How old were you? Uh, I was uh, I was five when my mom taught me how to sew. Oh, what happened? Uh oh, we've lost some. Some thread here. I might have to go rethread this machine, Angela. Uh oh, did your bobbin run out? No, bobbin is good. I just need to rethread the actual machine. Oh, I, gotcha. I don't know what happened, uh, but I'm gonna do that really quick. So I, uh, I was five, and I, I probably made some sort of Barbie clothes. But a lot of times, um, I, I, my real, real, real first project was I made this like skateboard in seventh grade. So. By the way, I left you up there because a lot of people are like, how do you thread that? What's an automatic threader? That was it. One touch of a button. <laughs> uh, thank you. It was a lot of pressure, but I did it and it worked <laughs> out just fine. Um, I love the automatic threader. I don't know how old everybody is, but I am 51 and I noticed that my vision is not what it used to be. I used to laugh at my mom like, you can't see that, whatever. <laughs> and now I can't see it. So thank God for the automatic threader. Because I'm not doing it by myself. <laughs> that makes two of us. Oh, Rosie, happy birthday. She's 73 today, and she started sewing at 70. That's yeah. amazing. With projects with masks during COVID. Well, amazing. they got you in, and now there's no turning back, Rosie. It's like riding a bike. Once you learn how to sew, it's so fun. Go. When you learn how to sew, you walk around. When you go to stores, you're like, oh, I can make that. Oh, I can make that. Oh, I can make that. And then and then, like, if you're like me, you have a million projects of, oh, I can make that. And then you just have too many projects to do. <laughs> a lot of people said they started sewing for their dolls and Barbies. You know, I had Barbies and I had dolls. I was the biggest tomboy, though. So I, that's probably why I just made myself and my sister's stuff. I skipped the dolls. <laughs> Oh, you skipped the dolls. I, I mean, I, I made like, I was like hand sewing um, my, here's on the floor. I was hand sewing Barbie clothes. And my mom said, all right, it's time that you learn how to use a sewing machine. And so I was <laughs> probably just sewing straight stitches just to get the practice on the machine. Uh, that was the wrong side. And then I would just sew scrunchies and things like that. But my very first project I loved, I mean, I, I, I used to sew like pop-up things. Like I sewed a plate of cookies one time. <laughs> I agree. Creative appliques. Uh, when you learn how to sew, everyone wants to be your friend. That is oh. so true, except uh, except for family. They kind of catch on quickly that it's not going to happen. <laughs> and you know what I say? Yeah. And you know what I say to people? They're like, oh, you can sew? Can you take the sides of my shirt in? Can you fix my pants? Can you do this? Can you do this? I go, yep, put it on the pile. Put it on the pile. And if I say put it on the pile, they know it's never going to get done because give me one huge project, I'll get it done. Give me a million tiny little things that you want fixed. Oh, I lost my thread again. Okay. It's time for us to look at the automatic threader. Um, I don't know why it keeps coming out, Angela. Do you have any idea? No, I wasn't watching. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> Okay. Uh, I'm just going to rethread it from the top. Uh, it just, I think um, it was just the tail wasn't long enough, but that's okay. So here we are again. And I'm just By using way, an all purpose. What she does here. She will just put that under, put it through, cut the thread, and boom. And then I like to pull it over to the side. Yeah. I do but this too. is what happened. This, this tail was a little bit short when it pulled up. 
it pulled out of the needle. And um, I saw that happening, but you know, I just let it go. I didn't, I didn't really think of it. <laughs> I was just like, okay. All right. So actually we're in good shape here. I have, oh my goodness. I have one last thing, one last square to put on there. What do you think about that? You guys, this has been so such a fun, easy project. It's so fun. It's so easy. In fact, I was like, uh, this might be a little boring for everybody because it's so fun and easy. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I realize. There we go. Hi, Kay. I, I saw Kay's comment earlier. She wanted a free motion foot and she's like, she just found it in her machine. So good for you. Go oh, for it. That's awesome. Uh, oh, no way. Um, Melanie Taylor says. Her grandmother made her Barbie dolls and crop tops and mini skirts out of balloons. Oh my goodness, that would be a fun challenge. Out of balloons? <laughs> oh gosh. She made oh, it's her... looking good, Jane. It's looking good. It's really great. So let me just lay this out and just give you the next steps and let me get rid of the rest of the stuff I have on my table. Okay, look at how great this is. Now, if we're really, you know, garmenting, we would want to press our seams and make sure they're flat if you were surging. But you know what? In this case, I don't care because it's going to get wrapped up around your neck. So we have 13 squares. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Oh, shoot. 12, 13. Can I go through sew those on? Sure. Um, well, well, I don't understand how I got two extra of these. <laughs> Welcome to the rest of our sewing rooms, Jane. <laughs> did I not, uh, did I go crazy or should we just put this thing together? Maybe you had just two extras. Maybe they were just extras. Well, I have I 11, know. so 11, 12, 13. I guess I didn't, one, two, three, four, five. There should be a six, seven. Uh, did the gremlins take it? Oh, here it is. I found it. Thank you. That's why. So I'm going to sew this here and I'll sew one more of these. Okay. Let's go back. How's everybody else doing? What's going on? <laughs> everybody having a story. good new year? <laughs> oh, ab absolutely. We had a good new year. A uh, very good new year. Uh, I think everyone in the comments, uh, last week I saw them and many said they got stuck in that snowstorm, which Jane, I got stuck in the Chicago area. Oh, you did? Got stuck in Michigan. How do you like that for Christmas? That was like the first and hopefully the last that ever happens. So were you just here for fun or what were you doing? Visiting my mom and my sister had her new baby. So I had to see the, I'm, I just love babies. Not oh. saying the baby voted over win, but I went in early and then the snowstorm hit. But you, did you get all that snow over there? Or did you get out of town? Out we, of Dodge? We were supposed to have family in from Buffalo, New York. Oh, and <laughs> Buffalo got pummeled. Do we have any friends on with us from Buffalo? Um, that was a hot mess over there. It was a hot mess, and they were supposed to fly out. Their flights got canceled. So I had this huge, huge dinner for 10. I had my table all set, brand new, fresh, um, homemade tablecloth and table runner and all the fun stuff and food and everything, and uh, me and Kurt. <laughs> <laughs> So we made the most of it. We puzzled. We did a thousand piece puzzle. Uh, I think I made some scarves. You know, it was what it was. <laughs> a little bit of that. Yep. All right. That was it. I, I had to add these last two and now we are done. Uh, Perfect. Let's go. Okay. So thank by the you. Way, Jane, Jane yeah. I got to point out that you, um, I'm looking at your fabric and although those are sweaters, I don't see a lot of fraying going on at all. Yeah. And I mean, there's a little teensy bit here on the edges. And remember, I was like, oh, I'm not worried about this section. And I'm not because I'm still going to, you know, it's going to end up being folded in or sewn over. Not a lot of fraying, but remember, we're going to cover this and we're going to sew the edges and it's going to be a scarf. And uh, it was either from your closet, these, these sweaters, or it was from the resale shop. So it, this is an invaluable scarf that you're going to love forever, but it didn't cost you a lot of money. How about that? So go. I'm going to lay this out um, and it's long, right? So for me, I'm going to add a couple of uh, pins to these, uh, what do you call it? What are, what are these, these connecting seams? Thank you very much. And when I sew this, 
I'm going to sew one side, then I'm going to sew the other, and I'm going to wait to do the ends until last because I just want to make sure they're even and they look nice. Uh, okay. And my scarf is so long, it is going over my computer, over my everything that's next to me. <laughs> uh, and yeah, I you know I'm I'm loving the airflow. I gotta tell you, Angela, I think you know this. The gathering foot is just my favorite thing on the planet. And I know we're not gathering anything right now, but I love that because the ideas are endless. when it comes to your serger. Uh, but the ideas are endless when it comes to creating. So again, here's what we're doing with two scarves. I'm just laying these two pieces together. Um, so I'm, I'm certain that you guys are having a blast just watching me do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. Uh, oh, it, good it, idea. Barbara says, wouldn't it be fun to stuff some fringe inside the ends? Oh yeah. I, Barbara, oh my goodness, I love that idea. Last night when I was just laying there trying to fall asleep, I thought to myself, oh, I could add some fringe on the inside of those. So you beat me to the you beat me to the suggestion, but super fun idea. <laughs> you could also make that fringe from Ooh. yarn, right? And has a good one too. How hard would it be to embroider on the squares? Hey, Love Anne, it? super easy, super easy. I'm thinking, I don't know about you, Jane, but I'm thinking just like a four by four hoop with some sticky back stabilizer, just picking little designs and, yeah. and you could just add throughout the whole thing. That would be uh, awesome. I think that is a great idea. In fact, uh, we have some Buffalo Bill fans in our family because of Buffalo. And I was like, oh, I should put the Bill's logo right here or even on some of the other parts of it. But like you said, I, I love the idea of just having it go, uh, you know, throughout this, the scarf, right? Very uh, fun. Oh, so Phyllis, make fringe from leftover sweater fabric. That's a great idea. I love that idea. Okay, so here we go. Uh, I wanna know, has anybody made a scarf uh, from sweaters? I'm sure people have. I, I have I not. I have yeah. not. I will now though, because uh, I actually have a couple sweaters here. I'm doing something with my fashion sewing club. We're going through our closet, Jane, and picking out stuff. Okay, so ask, and this would kind of fall into re refashioning. Do you have anything in your closet that you've had for, well, in my case, like eight years that yeah. I've worn like twice, but I love it. And why don't I wear it? Well, I could cut it up and turn it into a sweater now, but I'm trying to, so do you have anything like that in your closet? Like maybe you need the perfect pants or the perfect skirt or the perfect something to go with it. I have. You don't have it. Yes. I have so many of those things in my closet. Um, I'm going to cut that because I got a little bit long. Um, yes. I have lots and lots of things in the closet that can be repurposed. And that is why, meet me at the sewing machine. And that is why I keep everything. I, I don't <laughs> get rid of anything because I think, oh, I'm going to make something out of it. So I love it. I love, it. Like I love the idea of repurposing, refashioning, reusing. Uh, and here we go with this. So this is going to be one long, fun seam. I'm going to, once I do this, look at the back side to make sure as I go, I'm going to try and pull the back piece along so I know that I'm getting both pieces. And it's so long. It's just falling on the ground. Eesh, sorry. <laughs> uh. And again, if you sew both sides, flip it right side out and say, oops, I missed a spot, turn it right back out and sew it up. I love the idea of adding a patch or embroidery, something to the edges of these. And this is something that I get so excited about. I want to make, I want to make these all afternoon as soon as we hang up. I know. I'm laughing. Know I'm laughing with Liz. <laughs> She's like, oh yeah, keep everything. <laughs> hey, listen, okay. everybody knows my motto. And my motto is this, more is more and less is a bore, which is why <laughs> I keep everything, which is why I have excess of everything because you never know when you're going to need it. And this is why my scarf is 70 inches long because more is more and less is a bore. That is true. Um, let somebody else worry about it when they when <laughs> <Oops>. <laughs> later. <laughs> <laughs> 
So you know have right sides together right now, and you're just sewing all the way around. Are you sewing the ends too, or just Not all the way around? Ends yet. I'm just going to sew uh, right sides together. Okay. Just to make sure that my ends have have can match up and they they look like where I want them to be. Um, you could go all the way around and then and then leave a little opening at one end to turn it right side out. And then honestly, at the very end, when after we turn it right side out, I'm just going to do a quick little hand stitch, whip stitch it close. I guess you could top stitch it. Um, but I like the hand stitch to me, it can be invisible. And also this is the coming to the end here. I'm going to round that corner when I come to the end next time. Now here, I want to make sure I do, um, back stitch on the end. Okay. So that's one side and I'm going to flip it around and do the other side. I know, look at that. I'm bad. I'm not mad about it. I'm just going to start later. I'm going to tuck that in that this might end up being, a. Ooh, what's going on here? start there oops there we go um it's, that that's the that red sweater by the way is really thick but i like it because it's going to make a nice warm scarf uh, and then once i do this i'm going to go back through and make sure everything is i got everything matched up because again sometimes this under piece will hide from you um I'm sewing on a really small table too. So it's just hanging. It on. looks good though. It's, it's hanging on the ground, which I normally would be sitting in my lap. I know you like to sew standing up. Uh, sometimes I'll do that. This is a kind of a long piece, but super fun. I don't care. Um, <laughs> Phyllis what? said, hand sewing is a dirty word for her. Machine I stitching. Know, oh. I know it's a dirty word. I got you. I understand. <laughs> But I was thinking like, well, I could top stitches and that would be easier. But the something about the hand sewing on top of the knit made me happy. So if, if that's going to make you throw up a little bit in your mouth, um, when I do it, you'll we'll just pretend like it's not happening. <laughs> that's me hand stitching. And again, you can make this as thick or as, as uh, skinny as you want. You can use different fabrics. You can you can make this out of blouses, which would be super cute. If you did like old silk blouses, you could do a silk scarf, different patterns, textures, all the, all the good stuff. So I am getting to the end here. And here we go. That's a long, let's go back to our cutting table so we can look at these edges, okay? Ooh, thank you. <laughs> here we go. Okay. Hi, everybody. How you doing? Hi. Hi. Okay. So here, yeah, I just want to make sure I got all edges of this. Uh, got a little crazy right there, a little, little whirly. I'm not worried about it. <laughs> Jane, I got another good one for you. Barbara's on a roll today. Must be some good vibes happening in Texas. I think this is the Barbara Jones from Texas. Is It is, isn't it? Uh, there's three Barbara Jones, but I'm pretty sure this is her. She says she wants enough supplies that at 10 o'clock on a Sunday night when she's sewing, she doesn't run out. And I'm so with that. You probably are too. Amen to that, Barbara. Me too. I want <laughs> I I agree. I think we're all the same. So by the way, I want to make sure my ends are sort of the same. And this is good news because this is the part of the sweater that was part of the armhole. So what I'm going to do here is go in and sew this round. And then here, I'm going to go round and stop, round and stop. And then we're going to turn this thing inside out. And then we're going to call it a day. What do you think? Thumbs up? That sounds good. And everybody can have my mantra, more is more and less is a bore. And then we're all going to be best friends. Because <laughs> <laughs> I want enough supplies too. But I mean, like the fabric stash, I mean, that we all have... Uh oh, something's going on. Oh, I'm a little stuck. So when this happens, I'm going to have to. Oh, maybe we. Uh, maybe my fabric got stuck underneath. I hate it when that happens. I know. Uh, what do you do when that happens? I have to take the little plate off 
and oh, pull goodness. it out. Or you might, if you have a seam ripper, just go down there and dig a little bit. This is actually really good for live though, Jane, because I've done this <laughs> on a live show and people are like, oh, I've had that happen. So yeah. for those that have a sewing machine, I'll take you out for a sec while you're cutting. You. Uh, for those that have had this happen or you want to prevent it, some of your machines, not all, but some of them, have two needle plates. So if you are working with a lightweight knit and you have the time that you want to take to switch your needle plate. Now, not all machines come with this, but look at your needle plate. One has a little itsy bitsy circle and one has a little opening. So grab the one with the itsy bitsy circle, but do not do a zigzag stitch or anything like that because you'll break your needle, but that helps. And I've had this happen. Uh, I, I'll bet you if we leave the comments open, Jane, to all the brother fans, they're all, it's going to be flooded with, yes, it's happened on knits. It's happened on shears. Yeah. It's happened on chiffons. Yep, it happened. Uh, and I can see the culprit right in here. I wish I had my tweezers. I'd go get it. <laughs> um, but here he is. Get rid of that. Did you get her out? Uh, I got the scarf out, and I'm just getting this untangled uh, from what's in there. When this happens to me, um, you know, you just it is Make what it, it work. is, right? Yeah, so I just worked the whole thing apart and now I'm just putting it back together. That's all. So yeah, I eventually, I always get it out. I mean, I've had it in there where it's really stuck. And honestly, I wasn't jamming anything in there. I'm famous for jamming things in the, into the machine. I'm sorry about that. It's just what happens to me. Um, okay. Said she's had that happen on cottons. So a little trick. Now this wouldn't be in her case with Jane, cause she started in the middle, but for any of you that are maybe new to stitching and you've had this happen, one thing is to start, not at the very edge of your fabric, but Jane didn't do that. So hers would be a whole different thing, but start in just a little bit. So then that way, if you do one back stitch, your fabric doesn't get stuck in there. Ask me how I know that. How do you because know that? I'm not. <laughs> it's gotten stuck in there. And I agree, Phil, it's only on live shows. We only do that for your entertainment. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. I am going to your thread. I'm going through a lot. <laughs> Real life. Totally, guys. Totally. Hey guys, I'm actually really, um, normally I'd be stressing out about this, but I feel okay. There we go. Okay. Let's see what happens. Should we? Back I mean, in I mean, business. So huh? We're back in business. I agree, Delia. Real life. Oh, look at that. It's stuck again. What do we think is going on, Angela? Uh-oh. Oh. Yeah. All right. I'll take you out for a second. Yeah. Hey. It could either be the threading, which you just rethreaded it. It could be the upper thread or the bobbin thread, which you just rethreaded. So yeah, I did. I think it's, this is, I don't, I don't know. I think it's the upper thread. Uh, you don't have me on there, do you guys? <laughs> I don't. I, we can hear you, but we can't see you. All right. Everyone's saying, um, hmm. Jane does not have the single whole thread plate on. But I think I have a feeling that yours is uh, maybe the upper thread. Remember that came undone again? It might yeah. have just all it has to do is put a little bit of back. Um, Naomi, tissue paper underneath when stitching. Yeah, I have some friends that swear by that. I've never done that, but that is another one. Uh, when I'm surging, I always have a little extra piece of fabric that goes through. That's one little. We're, we're just having fun chatting about sewing, Jane. No, I love it. Well, I'm trying to troubleshoot what's going on here. Um, I do think that there's something extra and that I would have to, but at least it happens to everybody, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Mm -hmm. The bird's nest. We love that. Yeah. There yeah. should be a, another word for that probably somewhere. It's a little bit, it's, it's just tight. I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to salvage this uh, while we're here together. <laughs> If not, you can just walk us through how it ends. We got the idea. And there's a full blog post in case you all missed that. Some of you rolled in late. The blog post will be up, I believe, next the end of next week, from what I understand. I'll keep you posted on that. Yeah. So uh, are we oh you're you you're there. Oopsie. Uh, I um you tell me what you'd like to do. I can I think it's underneath and I would have to take the plate off. Uh, I think yeah, I've so got just come back to the table, show us how to end it, and yeah. then we'll refer them to the blog next week. Yeah, because that's, that's a pain. Idea. Oh, everything was going so great. <laughs> I can't believe that, that my little trusty machine 
Uh, it never does that. Okay, so let's just pretend. You know what? We don't even have to sew it. I was going to sew around and then leave a hole and then just sew this all the way across. This is where we were when it got stuck. But basically, I've left one end with a tiny hole. Typically, my arm would not fit through it. Uh, but today it is because it's a full hole. So sorry about that, guys. That That's a user error right there. Um, and then I'm just going to turn it inside out. And if it, if, you know, this happened and you didn't have time to fix it, you could just uh, get another machine or you could surge it or you could hand stitch it if you were running out the door because it was a gift. But please, let's pretend that this is closed all pretty like that. And then I like to just take these edges and pull them flat and then pull some more flat. Uh, and again, you can make this as thick or as thin as you want. Um, but I find that once I, I've done this a few times, because you can see all of these, uh, these corners are meeting, all these stitch corners. But if I pull them flat enough, they stay flat and they're perfect for a scarf. It doesn't really tube up on me enough. But um, this is here. And then... This is here, and 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 it look it looks. I don't know if this is you can see this, but it looks skinny until you pull it out, and then you've got this nice flat piece. Um, and I might even press it down. Okay, so then what I would have done here, this would have been sewn to here, and I would have just used my needle and thread and just done a little hand stitch over that, and then you've got your your scarf, my friends. Yeah, so I guess if everything had to break, it broke at the perfect time. That is so <laughs> cute. Everybody's saying beautiful <laughs> stuff happens. We love it anyways. That's a cute, cute scarf. And you know, Jane, I love the texture, the two different textures you use. You got the softer sweater. You've got the nubbier sweater. It's a great combo. And then the one you're wearing is different yeah. too. Yeah, so I, lo I love this. This is uh, like a cable knit. It's so pretty. And this That's is just, the word. I could not think of it. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's, it ends up, you saw this. This was two sweaters. And we used all of the sweater to create the scarf. You can make it as long, as short as you want. I don't know about you guys, but when you're tying it in a knot or when you, you wrap it around, this one you can wrap around, right? This is on your body. Wrap it around and you could still give it a little tie. It's thick enough that you would pull this up over your little your little face and you've got, you know, you're good to go. That's so, so cute and soft. I love that sweater idea. You know, I think I would, <laughs> I hate to say it, Jane, that front of the red sweater with that cool zipper, I would totally be taking that and adding something to the back and turning it into another, uh, like a jacket. I, I love oh, zippers, yeah. hot sweaters. That's mm -hmm. a great idea. Um, and I love to repurpose old t-shirts. I'm gonna come I'm gonna come back to you. Hi. Come back because we want to <laughs> see the one. Isn't there one behind you too? No, the yeah. one you're wearing. Oh, yeah, well, there is one behind you. There's one behind me. Let me bring her up. So um, so this was like a kind of a brownish gray, and this one orange, like little nubbies on here. Do you see that cool pattern? So I that love this, great. and then the back side of that is just all this one. But it's really soft. It's really, really, really fun to wear. This is the one I actually do in the brother uh, blog, the video. So this is the one you'll see being made there. But you'll see how. Look at the ends came out perfectly on this one, and I used the same machine. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I just again, I this one is hand sewn at the very bottom. You could see it, but not really. Yeah, the texture because you think about your scarves. The other thing I yeah. think would be cool is to do color base color, another color, you know what I mean? And alternate and use three different scarves. So I love that. that and then the one I'm wearing right here. That's cute. A lot of people are asking about that one. That's adorable. Yeah. So this, again, look at this. That's a cable. Oh. Knit. This was a teal sweater, super thin. And then it was just a cream sweater. Uh, and again, my colors are at the end. I did the sewing. This is a little hand stitch. Can you tell me? Is that does it does it look hand stitch? No, it, 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 those little stitches get hidden in the fabric. It gets hidden in that in the sweater material. You can't even see it. But look at how like it's really long, and I can whip it around my shoulder one more time. Let me just go over here. 
Uh, and I want to show you, I have it actually. Super, super Look cute. At this. this is the sweater. So these are the sleeves. Oh. Here's the sweater of the one I'm wearing. So this, oh, this my yeah. Goodness. So I have a little extra if I wanted to do something else. And I also have the sleeves you can use. Think about the sleeves. Um, the, the elbows get a little worn out. So if you get to the sleeves and you're using the elbow portion, it's not as uh, it's worn, really way more worn than the body of the sweat of the sweater. Uh, here is the one. Look at that. That's oh, yeah. yeah. You can see that so much better when you have the piece. So it has little nubs on it yeah. or something. Yep. Yep. A little texture. Yep. And so, mm -hmm. so I love using that texture and mixing the textures with the flat. Uh, and again, here's my gray. Oh no, that was my sleeve just used. Yeah. Here's it looks like again. cashmere. Oh, it looks so. Sweet. I have a black one that is a beautiful. This one right here, this is uh, super, it's black, but it's super, really nice. I'm like, oh, I think I want to wear this. But then I looked at it, it's kind of ratty. There's a couple of holes in the bottom. There's a hole the in neckline the will get stretched out. That's like always the first thing. Mm -hmm. Neckline looks, I think there's and a commercial really about a that. really nice sweater, but I thought, well, wow, this, you know, this is a great base for a scarf. So I'm going to use that in another scarf. But you can see, and I think it's super fun to see where it came from. So this is what I'm wearing. Yeah, leg warmers would be great. I love that. You can I make do. even like fingerless gloves. Mm -hmm. Be fun. What about arm warmers? Like you start it with a high cuff and you like cuff it up here. So you have arm warmers and leg warmers, but so many things you can do with your scarves. You can make even sort of like a cowl neck scarf if you just wanted to use one and cut off the top and the arms. But I, uh, I got inspired. My husband got a gift from somebody and it was this like sweater, scarf, different patterns that somebody bought at the store. I don't know. And I thought, well, I can make that. And that's where <laughs> I came from. So we went um, to the thrift store and we found a couple of sweaters. And I think this one came first. And then I did this one and now we're making that one. And then I just went on the sweater making kick because they're fun. So now you have like, you've got like five already finished, a couple for you, a couple for gifts already in the works. Perfect. But I love this idea of putting like a little, you could put somebody's, you know, your, your the name right there. You can personalize it. You could put a logo right there. And Frankie Angela, like says, you monogram, said, monogram yeah. it up. I agree. I love it. I love it. Super easy. Thank you for bearing with me with my machine. I'm going to go fix that right now. But I think everybody, <laughs> if it's raining where you're at, it's time to make a scarf. Or, or if it's snowing. <laughs> that sounds good. Making a scarf. And I apologize for the... Uh, the end, the, the sewing machine there at the end, that was user error and I will fix that. Uh, but certainly we got through, we got through the bulk of the project and it was easy. We got it. It looks great. Everybody loves when something like that happens and it only happens when you're live, but you know what? It does happen every once in a while and it's an easy fix. Rethread, take everything out and start over. But who wants to do that live when you're leaning over a camera? Not I. Right. No, no, no. A lot, of, a lot of pressure right there. A lot of pressure. But you know, and the, the good news is this, is that we are live. I'm standing, leaning over. There's a camera around underneath in here. So uh, I will sit down and, and take it out and, and put it all together and it'll be just fine. Sounds great. Everybody's saying, thank you, Jane. Great project. We love these projects. It will be on the blog. So if you go to brotherssews.com, scroll to the bottom, there's a sewing blog and a crafting blog for the scan and cut. You'll see these. This will be on there next week. So depending on when you're watching this, maybe it'll be on there in a couple of days. Great job, Jane. Great thank job. You. It's great to see you, Angela. Everybody, thank you so much for joining us. It's been fun hanging out with you and sharing your stories. And be sure to tune in. Uh, if you're not making one today, you'll see how this one was made. But it's exactly the same way. <laughs> Sounds good. Thanks, right. everyone. Thanks, Have a good day. Bye.